you be yeah. I'm sure you've all been here before but it's I, what I like about it it's so diverse it's got a bit of everything for everybody and that's that makes it very very special so yes nice to be here are we sitting or are we standing yeah, please do. okay no, no, please whether I can get up again I don't know I might rely on you that's fair enough that's fine anything you require Woo. well it, it's really really nice for me to be here and come and see you Aww. Uh, I know you're very busy, uh, and it was, you know, I was told you might not get it, you're very busy. Oh. <laughs> so there you are. Well, it, it's nice to be busy, I must say. We've been doing a lot for um, UNICEF the last weekend. We were in London doing quite a big benefit for, for Bond, but also for UNICEF, which was Roger Moore's favourite um, charity. So we had an amazing time doing that um, on the HMS Belfast. So all the people that came along and supported it they, they did an incredible job and we had such fun all the bond people were there a lot of bond ladies so yes That's brilliant. well i'm sure we're going to talk about bond and the things but i'm intrigued to ask you about your music career <laughs> because well <laughs> yeah, there are some videos where you want to attract all that and be singing but you are backed by members of the band crew and then really exciting, I can't get to my head, Gary Newman. Yes. Do you remember Gary Newman? Yes. Yes. Excellent. Big fan of Gary Newman, are you? What a lovely man and what an amazing musician. He really, you know, an extraordinary man and I was lucky enough to um, work with him. I did, uh, I don't know if anybody's heard it, but it was a record Gosh, it's a good few years ago now, in the 80s. 84, I think. 84, yeah, 84. And it was called Pump Me Up. <laughs> Gary's title, nothing to do with me. <laughs> and, um, but he, he was recorded at his studios in Shepparton, Numa and for Numa Records. And apparently it came out and it did quite well in Italy. But um, he, was, he was just delightful to work with. And I did... Uh, he did a show at the Empire in um, Shepherd's Bush and it was called The Main Attraction and his backing singer didn't turn up. So out of the blue, he called me and said, would you like to come along? And, and I hadn't really heard the track. We did a quick rehearsal and then I went along and, and did the you know, live television show with him. But nicest man, really sweet, very self-deprecating and very talented and his family are amazing too. So, so did you initially start off in the in an idea of having a musical career or were you on stage or did it, nope. you in first? How did it all work? <clears throat> None of that actually. That right? I, I wanted to go to art school. I wanted to study art or design or something like that. I'm incredibly dyslexic, which is um, a struggle, can be a real struggle sometimes. Any of you out there, dyslexic people, would realize that dyslexic. It, it, what's that? Dyspraxic as well. I don't think I've got that, but I'm not very good as, as uh, would be proved at maths. But, but dyspraxic, no. Dyslexic, very, very much so. Um, so I, I basically didn't come away with many uh, exam results at school apart from French and art. Went to art school for a little while and um, did Saturdays. I remember doing, and I was 16, because the school had closed down my school. It wasn't me, it wasn't me that closed the school down, but, I, but the school did close down. And I went to do the um, art in Brighton Art College, which was really good. And there was an art student friend who was studying photography. So basically, he asked me and my mother if he could take some photographs, which he did. He sent them to David Bailey. I don't know if you're all too young to know David Bailey. You're not, <laughs> he was an amazing photographer in the 60s. He, he photographed everybody, Hendrix, Beatles, Stones, everybody. But I got to, um, uh, to, to work with him. I did a film with him. And that was my first sort of foray into acting as it were but i had no plans you know no i had no ambitions to be an actress um and i didn't i sort of stumbled through the motions i was lucky enough to get um i i, I was an extra in the original casino royale 
And I remember, I remember being on set with um, David Niven, Orson Welles, and Woody Allen. So I was a kid at the time. And all the girls, but there was, I, was a, I was called a guard girl, and I was wearing Paco Rabanne clothes, which was pretty amazing. Um, but all the guard girls, they were filming The Dirty Dozen, and all the girls said, oh, let's go off and see the men in the canteen. And I said, no, I don't really want to see the men in the canteen. I prefer to sit on the set and watch Woody Allen work, which is what I did. So that was kind of my first foray into acting. Okay, so then the, the next thing that seems to emerge when I get into films, you fall into horror films. Now, Barbie would have gone to the girls for a horror film. How did that happen? How did you even say that? Yeah, that's very odd, because again, I've had no plan. You know, I, I wasn't particularly ambitious at the time to do acting. I was incredibly shy, partly due to the dyslexia, um, which I can't say I overcame, but the shyness, you know, I don't seem shy, but I am. <laughs> um, so um, it came about via, I was doing modeling, and I did a big campaign for a famous drink called Land's Navy Rum. <laughs> and they had big posters all over the country. I remember my dad, who worked in the city, he was a solicitor, and he said, he said, Caroline, he said, I went to work in the city and I was coming up the escalator to, um, in Waterloo Station only to be met by this massive poster of you wearing not a lot. I remember him saying that. I was wearing a wetsuit and I had a dagger strapped to my thigh and, um, and they poured a bucket of water over me. So that was kind of my first uh, Lambs Navy rum. So basically, um, Sir James Carreras of Hammer House of Horror Films had seen the poster. He used to travel up and back to Brighton and he'd seen the posters and he said, he said, oh, let's, um, let's have a look at this girl. Let's bring her into the office and I'll meet her, which they did. And um, they asked me to do a screen test, which I did with a wonderful director called Peter Collingson, who was sadly no longer with us. And then out of that, they offered me the two films and a contract. I had a contract for a year with Hammer and I got to do Dracula AD 72 and also Captain Cronus, which to this day remains one of my favorite films my personal favorite. So that was, again, you know, it's all by accident, it's, which is odd. Seems odd to me. So the interesting thing about the horror film, the horror film we see on the screen, is horrific. It's quite nasty. It's creepy things going on. Yes. You got to wear with Peter Fisher, Vincent Price. I've heard rumors that they're quite sweet people backstage. So was, it, was, was there a, a big difference between getting into character oh. and what went on there? Oh, so much, Des. Oh, my goodness. I mean, like chalk and cheese. I mean, the person who kept the most, I would say, in character would be Christopher, Christopher Lee. But Vincent Price, I mean, um, Hammer let me out of the contract, which I had for a year. Um, they let me out to do the film. They didn't want me to do the film, the, the two Dr. Fives films. They said, if you do it, you don't get credited. I said, I really don't mind, and you don't get paid. I said, I really don't mind. I just want to watch Vincent work. So this is what I did. You know, I, I, I was uncredited in both the films. One of my most taxing roles, I must say, lying in that coffin next to him. But Vincent used to come in to myself and the makeup girl's room early in the morning and bring some of his wonderful food in. He used to make this lovely pate. First thing in the morning at six o'clock, we were sitting in makeup and I was being suitably whited up as the, you know, as the dead body. Um, and then he'd come in and said, there you are, my darlings. Enjoy your breakfast. And he was just the sweetest person. So, yes, totally different. Vincent off, as was Peter. Peter was just a dream to work with. Uh, we, we did the two films together. We did At the Earth's Core as well family film, so that, was, so that was slightly different, family film with creatures. Um, but yes, I, and, and Christopher, I, 
I was so delighted to work with Christopher, who was my Dracula, and I requested of the director, Alan Gibson, not to see him as Dracula. We chatted beforehand and, you know, we discussed a little bit, but it was very organic. What we did was very organic because we hadn't really rehearsed that. And I didn't want to see him appear as Dracula until I did see him. And when I did see him, I feel that my reaction was as real as it could be. I became that girl. I became Laura Bellows at that time. And he was Dracula. And he was walking towards me. And I felt frightened. And I think, I mean, that was my turning point in acting for me. I thought, actually, I like this because I'm totally believing in what I'm doing. And before... Maybe I wasn't believing, you know, maybe I was wandering through the roles, learning the lines and doing them as best as I could. But until you touch that sweet spot of actually being there, being present, being that person, it's like another dimension. And for me, that was my turning point. And I owe it a lot to Christopher Lee. So, I was looking at the meeting while I hear those, um, with, uh, with the great I was. Um, when I was looking about the Golden Boys, that was just a fact of the bottom, that it cost two million a day, but it grossed something like 35 million. Yes. I mean, that's a crazy small budget for the amount of time and effort that I went into. But the amount of million that people have seen that. I know. It's interesting too, even today, because this is a horror con, really, isn't it? But the amount of lovely people that have come up to see me at the table have said that Sinbad, Golden Voyage, was possibly one of their first films that they saw. And it was such, such a beautiful film to work on. It was like a fairy tale. Ray, all, when I, I got to know Ray very well. And um, in fact, I know Vanessa, his daughter, she's my stepdaughter's best friend. And we're doing a thing up in Glasgow. In, it's the 50th anniversary of Sinbad. So they're having a showing in, in Glasgow. And, and Vanessa is based there. But um, he was unbelievable to work with. And I, I don't know if I coined the phrase, but unless I heard it, I call him the godfather of special effects. And when myself and my daughters went to the BAFTA for, for Ray to receive the BAFTA, the person that brought the BAFTA out was Peter Jackson, who as a little boy had watched, had been influenced by Ray Harryhausen. And also on the screen came um, Steven Spielberg saying without Ray, there would be no um, Star Wars. And then you had James Cameron, Tim Burton, who does a lot of his stop motion uh, stuff, you know, that he's, he still does the stop motion. But it's true, Ray influenced a legion of these now filmmakers that we have today, these both here and in the States and worldwide. So yes, I feel honored to have worked on that beautiful, he always called it a fairy tale. He wanted people to come away having had the most amazing experience. And I personally think, um, he was, he was very funny. He used to, he was a, a fantastic artist. He used to do these wonderful drawings to show us what the creatures would look like. Because we'd do the, all the live action first, and then he'd put the creatures on to what we did as the actors. You know, for instance, John Philip Law had to work with, um, actually he had to work with a lot of them. He had to work with Carly, the, the is it six arms or eight? She had six arms, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. But so John Philip Law had to work with two swords at a time. And he worked with a stuntman who had, he worked with two stuntmen at the same time. And he was blocking it with, is everybody all right? Yeah, hopefully nobody's hurt. Smashing time. <laughs> hopefully not. Sorry. Um, anyway, um, I don't know where I was. Oh, yes, he had. So he had to work with these four swords fighting against um, Carly, who was 
put on after. It's just magical how he made that happen. He was just a genius in my mind. Have we got to go? Well, I'll be signaling to my niece in the audience to make sure she takes photos. Oh, where is she? Where? Where's your niece? Where is she? I'm going to secret and tell my niece to take a photo of being Caroline. Hello, where is she? Oh, oh, there you are. Oh, okay. Hello, niece. What's your name? Teresa. Teresa. What is it? Teresa. Oh, lovely. What a pretty name. Nice to see you. Sorry. Anyway, I've gone off on a tangent. You mentioned there was, um, and again, we will get onto bonds, but you've mentioned you've been to 50th anniversary celebrations of bonds, Sinbad, yep. how the films carry on. When I saw Ray Harryhausen do a talk, he said that people would come up to him and say, I've rewound the DVD of Sinbad multiple times and I know how that effect was done. And he said, well, that's the point, it will only be made to be seen once. We don't know that we need that, Are you surprised with these things about such a long life? I, the, the incredible thing about Ray is that it was only him. It was one person. After we shot all the live stuff, it took him one year to complete the film, doing it not digitally, not like they do now, no CGI, hand, hand, all, everything by hand which was just, you know, the stop motion. He'd move the hand, he'd move it, move it, move it. And then he'd put it all together. And then you'd have this amazing sequence. He was just pure genius. He actually, he, I remember, you know, the first King Kong, the Willis O'Brien, anybody know Willis O'Brien? He was, um, I think Ray was a very young boy and he did a little bit of, you know, uh, like a gopher, go for coffee, do that. And so he saw, Willis O'Brien do this amazing King Kong. And I think that's what spurred him on to do special effects or stop motion. Yeah. So, James Bond. James Bond. Now, in a James Bond film, I can imagine that if you're going to be in a James Bond film, it's going to be coolest to be either a baddie or a Bond girl. Now, which one are you? I'm the baddie or I'm the Bond girl. Do you know what? I think Naomi was a bit schizophrenic, personally, because she... I think she was one of the only women, as far as I know, that actually didn't want to sleep with James Bond. She just wanted to kill him. She just wanted to do that. So she was a kind of combination um, of characters. And I, I, having received the news that I got the film, which was... You know, I, I was I was delighted. I was overcome and delighted. I was up for the two films. I was up for Superman, and um, they offered me the part of Ursa, which I'm very pleased I didn't take, because um, Sarah Douglas did the most amazing job as Ursa. She was astounding. She was she was perfect. And so, with the, when I received the news that I had Naomi, I thought, okay. It's James Bond, and it's with Roger. And I had seen Roger a lot on camera and kind of got the gist before I met him. I got the gist of him, and he had great sense of humor. So I thought, okay, I kind of want to match the, you know, I want to have fun with him rather than just, you know, out and out scowling. So, so that's how my, my thought pat was to play him. And I, I, I work with uh, Lewis Gilbert. So, of educated Rita fan, fair fame. So, I was very lucky. It was a very clever idea at that time as well, because there was, you know, a lot of action in the women's rights movements and things trying to get women better representative, which has taken a long time to do anyway. Yeah. For you, not fancying James, being a strong female character on the screen. So, that must have been a great, you know. It was, it was, I think, I think. Do you know what? I think Bond girls go back a long way. If you look at Honor Blackman, you know, he, she was kind of a powerhouse, wasn't she? If you think about it. Um, except at the end, she succumbed, didn't she? So, but, but she was a, a terrific role model. I mean, you, and nowadays, you know, the Bond women are amazing. If you look at them, they're equal in every way to Bond. You know, psychologically, physically, they can do everything. So 
finally, I think, no, not, not that it should overtake Bond. Bond is always Bond. And for me, Bond should always be the Ian Fleming's. It should be male. You should always be male. But, um, you know, the Bond women are certainly holding their own now, so to speak, aren't they, really? Yeah. Now, some of those action scenes where you were in Bond, um, were you actually there in those speedboats and helicopters? How much of it was stunt doubles or how you? A lot, a lot was me, of course. I was in the speedboat, definitely. Um, so that was an experience and a half. It was, it was quite amazing to, to do. I'd, I'd, um, we'd waited around in Sardinia with all, in this beautiful hotel, the Carla de Volpe in Sardinia. And uh, everybody was there. You had Roger, Cubby, Richard, lovely Richard Keel. Barbara, everybody, the whole crew was staying in this wonderful hotel. We had terrible weather. It was, I think, the beginning of October, and the weather was rainy and grey and not what you expect for a Bond film. Hello, how are you? You're gorgeous. That's okay. Yeah, I like that. That's nice. We had terrible, terrible weather. Um, and then on the fifth day, the sun came out, and our, our DP, our, our director of photography, he was Claude Renoir, who was actually Renoir's grandson. So that was something else. Um, he said, right, he said, I think, I said, I think we, we will be ready to shoot now. He said, Caroline, are you ready? I said, yes, I'm certainly ready, I'm ready to go. So we got ready to go. We rehearsed the scene a um, couple of times. I found Roger extraordinary to work with because he was so giving as an actor. He really gave to you and therefore you had a chance to kind of give back to him, you know what I mean. But on the first shooting, we rehearsed it once coming into the dock. I went out on this great big speedboat, the Reva, which was very fast. I had um, the, the driver and, and the, the first AD lying on the floor of the boat, basically. But on the second time, when we were actually going to shoot, Lewis, um, we, he was on the, on the dock waiting with Roger and Barbara for me to arrive. And we were out a long way because the speedboat had to really build up momentum to get to the, um, you know, to get to the place. And we had to look, you know, like we meant business. Um, so I was out there waiting and Lewis said, right, in the walkie-talkie, he said, okay, Caroline, you know, on action, you have to sit down and then when you come nearer the dock and you see Roger and Barbara, you stand up. So I thought, yes, Lewis, I've got that. Okay, will do. And then um, I was out there, I was standing up, and the speedboat was starting to rev up, and then I heard this strange noise. I thought, what is that? Is that the speedboat? It was kind of a <laughs> sort of thing. I thought, what is that? Anyway, I, 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 um, I got ready, and Lewis, I heard him such say, okay, Caroline, action, sit down. So I sat down, and as I sat down, I felt pain, enormous pain on my, on my bum. I thought, oh my God, what's that? So this is PG, by the way. Um, anyway, so eventually I knew I had to get up, so I got up, and I'm in such pain, my bottom feels like it's on fire, and I got up. And I had to do this scene. And so if I look really grumpy and really bad tempered, I'm really, I don't feel good. And we did the scene, did the close-ups, did it all. And, and the, the, the little lady, the lovely wardrobe lady came rushing and said, Car Caroline, are you okay? I said, no. So we looked and I basically sat on a bee out at sea. So that was my first entree into, into Bond, my entrance. <laughs> A bit long-winded, sorry about that. Um, I think we've got time to uh, see how you think. Any cute? We've got a question for you. Does anyone out there want to turn into the middle? I don't Does bite. Anyone, anyone like to ask a question? Anybody got anything? I've got a new question to ask you. Have you got any of you? Have you got any more to ask you? No. 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 That's you. okay. If, I, if I've got this wrong in my head, I'm going to try Go on. Serious. Try me. Well, we were talking about Gary Newman, weren't yep, we? Yeah, we were. Now, one of my favourite pop stars when I was a young man. Am I right in the kitchen? You know I mean? I was. I was in Goody Two Shoes. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that, oh, that was wonderful. Yes, I've got a few 
You can have a picture if you want from the goodies. Yes, I do. Yeah, no, <laughs> more than welcome, of course. Um, yes, that was that was something else to work with him. I've been I've been very very lucky to have, have worked with um, these amazing people. He was again he was fantastic to work with. Again, he had the storyboards. He knew exactly what he wanted. And the last, the, it, yes, huge. I mean, he he kind of he had a director, but he. He knew exactly what he wanted because of the storyboards. Very artistic, very sweet man, very intelligent, very kind, and, and very talented, super talented. And I'm glad to see he went on to do quite a bit of acting in the States. Another, another one that people might know, um, I worked with, I had the great, enormous pleasure to work with Meatloaf. I did, uh, I played a vampire. I, ladies, I got to bite Meatloaf's neck, which was something else. It was, um, it was called If You Really Want To. And it was, it was good fun oh, doing wow. that. He was amazing. Wow. So I have been very lucky. <laughs> I've done a lot of strange things in my time. I am. Well, thank you. Listen, thank you, and thank you to all of you, and you know, supporting. A lot of people are doing stuff for charity over okay, here, yeah. and so you know, I, I, it's just been. I've had a lovely time. I'm really glad. Thank you so, so much for inviting me. Caroline's got some amazing photographs on your stand. I've seen a few of them. I'm going to look oh, you must go have some. Take some. Oh, I need to look and go around. <laughs> Please go and say hi to everyone in the temple. Ladies and gentlemen, can we give a big round of applause to Caroline and Rose. Thank you so much. And thank you to you for sitting and hearing me talking too much, as I always do.